Can we introduce Mr. Yep. Gowan Dash now? Okay, well, let's give him a hand and a warm welcome. Thank you very much, all of you, for uh, coming here tonight. And I want to uh, thank uh, the executive director of uh, Brookdale Summerfield, um, uh, Linda Picard, Steve, for inviting me. Uh, We're going to give you the mic. Is that okay? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, thank you uh, all for coming. And I especially want to thank um, uh, Linda Pekarski, uh, the executive director of Brookdale Summerfield, for inviting me uh, to do this tonight, and, as well as my brother, uh, Don Prokop, who, uh, without whom uh, this, the book and this evening wouldn't have been possible, and to whom the book is dedicated. And um, as was mentioned, uh, when Richard would uh, tell people about his various life experiences in enter the entertainment field or even his life in general. Um, they would say to him, well, you, uh, you ought to write your life story. And he would, uh, in response, he would say, but I'm still living it. So um, even after he agreed to do the book, sometimes he would say to me, you know, what? Yeah, he really didn't want to do uh, the book. He, he, it, it wasn't of his initiative. So he would ask me, you know, why are we doing this? You know, what's the purpose? You know, everybody and their brother and their dog is doing their autobiography, and you know that's not the reason why I want to uh, do this. And I don't want people to think that. So one day he said to me, "Okay, this is all your idea." So why don't you write the introduction and explain to people what it is we're trying to do with this. So well, I told them, you know, uh, oh, we could get, uh, how about we get a celebrity to do the introduction? You know, maybe, you know, sell more books that way. But he said, no, I want you to write the introduction, which is fine. So I'll write the introduction. So, um, Anyway, he, um, uh, I would, uh, what I would like to do is uh, read to you that introduction because I think it explains in a clear and entertaining way uh, how this book come together and what it's about. And after that, I would like to open it up uh, for questions. If any of you would like to make any comments or questions, um, uh, feel free. A curse and a blessing. As a young boy, I loved movies. For some years after we had relocated, uh, my mom had the newspaper from our hometown of Yonkers, New York, uh, delivered to our new home in the upstate Syracuse area. I enjoyed checking out the TV listings to see what scary movies would be playing on Chiller Theater down there on Saturday nights as such were rare on the channels in our area at the time. On this one particular weekend, when we would be going down to visit friends and relatives, Chiller would be showing the motion picture Curse of the Faceless Man, one of the few paperback movie review listings of that time gave out ratings. Poor, fair, good, excellent. Yes, it was excellent. I immediately recognized the film's charismatic leading man, Richard Anderson. Although I couldn't uh, pinpoint exactly where from at that moment, no doubt from watching The Rifleman and the Big Valley reruns uh, after school, or from seeing Paths of Glory, probably the greatest war film ever made on the afternoon movie, including uh, the horrifying scene where three innocent soldiers were executed, which made a resounding impression on me. And the curse of the faceless man was this. There was Quintilus Aurelius, the lava man of the film's title, a centuries-old spirit living in the material world, stripped of his identity, his place, his time, and most dearly, the love of his life, by a rain of volcanic fire and brimstone. 
she would move on through the ages uh, in the company of strangers until his one final attempt at physical reunion and a battle with Richard Anderson for the lady, ending with the surrender of his mortal coil in the waters of the Mediterranean, hopefully to find release, if not peace. I was overcome by the power of, the, of this low-budget film, which seemed to offer a portal into its own minimalist universe. It was then and there on that evening that somehow I knew that, for better or worse, my future would be involved with the entertainment field. I soon began to notice Richard Anderson in other credits, uh, particularly horror, sci-fi, fantasy films which I was interested in such as John Frankenheimer's Seconds and Seven Days in May, as well as Vincent Minnelli's The Story of Three Loves, Martin Ritz's The Long Hot Summer, and the film that led the way to the sci-fi age, the Star Wars forerunner, Forbidden Planet. And it was only a few years later uh, that the Six Million Dollar Man TV series really put uh, Richard's career into high gear um, in the public eye. And in fact, you'll read in these pages that at an earlier time, a famous star's wife saw him on television and called her husband in to watch the, uh, this young man doing a comedy scene with a beautiful lady and agreed to mentor Richard toward a seven-year contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Even so, I still feel to this day I was the one who discovered him on TV that night in Wappingers Falls and was duly proud of his new success. Out in California now, my knowledge of this actor's uh, career continued to grow with his westerns, such as with Clark Gable and Across the Wide Missouri, William Holden and Escape from Fort Bravo, Stuart Granger's costume action drama Scaramouche, and always a prize part, an episode of The Rifleman, which features the dashing uh, Richard Anderson in fine form as a card sharp uh, gambler, uh, Lariat Jones. But it would not be for a few number of years down the road that I would meet this memorable actor at an autograph show at the Hilton Hotel in Burbank, California. As I approached the table where he was set up, next to that of his bionic woman co-star, Lindsay Wagner, I was taken aback by his conversation with a couple of his young fans. Instead of talking films or about an episode of one of his uh, many TV programs, he came across as a, a more of a person interested in helping, animatedly discussing a popular self-help book with, with them encouraging one to take a more active role in her life. He quoted Abraham Lincoln. I later learned he is a Lincoln student. Quote, things work out when you make the best of the way things work out, unquote. All of this while two highly collectible Oscar Goldman action figures waved playfully from the table in front of him. Clearly, there was more to this man than we were given a chance to see in the many roles we've seen him in. After agreeing to do an interview with me for a popular movie magazine, I was quickly led to understand why people frequently ask him to write a book about his life. Having decided to call to propose that possibility to him, I soon had a publisher ready uh, to do one. Ben Omar of Bear Manor Media, upon hearing that Richard was involved, immediately agreed. Although a modest and frankly rather private person, Mr. Anderson is openly grateful for and appreciates the interest of fans and or friends in, in his life experiences. He agreed. It is for this reason that I offered uh, to write this introduction to at least attempt to put this biography memoir into an appropriate perspective and framework. This all leading up to my hitting the lottery, as it were, 
in having the opportunity to help document the fascinating life of this remarkable man and actor, Richard Anderson. So, um, I have, unfortunately, I wasn't able uh, to bring any books with me. If anyone's interested, we have some flyers with ordering information. And uh, <laughs> at this point, uh, I would like to open it up uh, to any comments or questions anybody might have. Where is he now? What is he doing now? He's in, he lives in Beverly Hills, and he's still active. He's more or less retired from acting. He just, that's his preference. He still gets offers, but he, uh, yeah, what he really enjoys doing is conventions, and he just did one in Maryland, uh, where uh, autograph conventions, like the one I, where I met him, and um, where people, um, you know, the fans are able to meet their uh, favorite uh, TV and movie stars, so uh, that was the most recent one. So he enjoys doing them, and he's also a travel buff uh, as well. So he's actually very active still. How long did it take you to write the book? <laughs> it actually began about six years ago, and it was kind of sporadic because, again, like I had mentioned, he he, he enjoyed working on it, but he just had some reservations because he wasn't really sure why we were doing it and how we'd come across. And so we kind of went back and forth, but then uh, uh, circumstances required that I relocate uh, to uh, Syracuse. And so uh, we kind of, I figured, well, it's, you know, it's never going to happen. But then about a year ago, uh, we got a call from him and said, let's finish this. So. I went out to California, we did the necessary work, and sent it to the publisher, and so here we are tonight. How old is Jim? I'm sorry? How old is Jim? He just uh, turned 89 in August, early August. Think he'll want to come and live here? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he loves uh, California. He was born in New York, uh, or New Jersey, uh, New York, so he, he's more of a... California person. Right. Uh -huh. Is he in good health right now? Yes, right. He's uh, very uh, active, and you know, I'm sure, just like everybody, you probably have good days and bad days. But uh, he's still very energetic and interested in life, and uh, this has been a uh, something that he's been very has uh, been a big big thing in his life. So. Wonderful. Do you think he'd come to see us? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we would have to make the you know necessary arrangements, but he's open to anything. In fact, there was one offer um, that uh, someone made, but it just so far nothing has come of it. But there are just a lot of little details that have to be worked out and ironed out before it can happen. Yeah. But he's open to anywhere, anywhere where he can meet fans. So. You're then, Debbie? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, schedule it next month. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about how you organized the book out? I do have a copy of it. Okay. And I love yes. the book. It's really fun to me because it brings me back into some of my younger years and watching those shows. And, and right. I do watch the, uh, the older movies uh -huh. uh, on television. I'm fascinated mm -hmm. with movies also. But how you organized it out, and there's so many nice pictures in there. Right. Is it a uh -huh. historical type? Is it um, right. well, chapter-wise? I tried to just kind of let it evolve as it as it would. You know, I had never written a book before. I had done interviews, but um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I bought a book. I found a book, a very um, helpful book about writing uh, one's memoirs and uh, gave a bunch of uh, chapters that I kind of followed that outline generally, but basically what I wanted to do was have him tell his story and just whatever he wanted to talk about. There are certain things that I wanted to ask him about that I was interested in, that I knew other people were interested in, and I try to mix those with what he wanted to talk about. And then just kind of see where it went, and and so it, it just kind of came together. And then the pictures, we, we looked at the pictures, and I thought, you know, the ones. So it was kind of an interview process, then, and then you 
That's how right. we all. Yeah, kind of. Interviews talking, and then you listened, and you wrote. Right. Okay. And then they cut things out, and we. It was. It was. It, it was actually a challenge for me because I, I'm used to working fairly quickly, where I would interview someone and then transcribe it and type it up and do whatever. But he was more detail oriented, which was a good experience for me because normally I would just kind of type it up and, you know, this is interesting, that's it. And it was, it, it was, but he wanted to have it a little more polished. And so, especially the first few chapters, and then that kind of set the momentum for things. So it was, it was interactive. So if we have the books, you're, you're willing to sign them? Oh, absolutely. Did he have a favorite role of, of all the well, did he have a favorite Yeah, he, of course, uh, you know, the, the Oscar Goldman role was the most, the biggest in his career, but there is a list of some of them that, uh, some of his roles that he was especially proud of, such as Paths of Glory, which was very, Prestigious, directed by Stanley Kubrick, who did, you know, many classic movies like Space Odyssey and um, and some uh, TV shows like The Rifleman. Uh, he, he liked and so A Long Hot Summer with uh, Paul Newman and Orson Welles. And so there's a chapter, in fact, about his favorite roles. Mm -hmm. Does he have yeah. a family? Uh, he has three daughters who he's extremely proud of that he talks about in the book. And I, uh, they've all done very well. I'll, I'll just say they've all done very well uh, for themselves. And we, uh, he talks a little bit about them in the book. But it's actually kind of mind-boggling. I would rather not go into a whole lot of detail. But <coughs> what they were able to accomplish is just... Uh, it's just amazing to me. So, when did he go out? What was the time period again? He went out to California. It was uh, uh, the 60s? early. Uh, no, it, it was he was about 10, 10 or eleven years old. So that would have been 1936, 37. Yep. So, you know. Mm -hmm. So you were you were an actor. <coughs> yes. Uh -huh. Right. Is that in the or is that more movies? Or? Uh, a little bit of everything. You know, my uh, interest had always been in um, movies and TV. And although stage is really the medium for an actor to really uh, get into the role because with a movie, you know, you film the end first and then the last scenes are the beginning and whatever, you kind of lose track of things. But I was, uh, I've always been a film fan, film historian. And so kind of, I kind of went all, all over the map in a way, uh, doing a little bit of uh, everything. So that's, mm -hmm. but my preference is still <laughs> with film because, you know, you could just like, you know, seeing the video, you know, you could show it many years later. Mm -hmm. well, anything else? You should be very proud. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Well, the, the important thing <clears throat> is that, you know, it means something to people. And it, it, it was very important to him that it have meaning and just not be something that is just like, you know, just written <coughs> kind of an ego trip. But uh, there's a lot of, he likens it to the American dream that here, yeah. you know, he, he grew up in the Depression, his family had a lot of struggles. and. Uh, he uh, went out to California, he had an idea of what he wanted to do, he worked hard at it, uh, you know, through, through his whole life. In fact, that's why he, you know, you hear about um, actors that, uh, you know, are, are you know, stars for a brief period of time and then they kind of flame out and you don't hear about them. But he knew what he needed. Well, one of the things he, he likes, uh, uh, he likes to quote Spencer Tracy, who whose acting advice was, you know, uh, learn the lyrics and don't bump into the furniture. <laughs> because it's, um, you know, it's actually, you know, it's a, it's a difficult field uh, to be an actor, to, to be, it, it requires a lot of discipline, and it's a lot of responsibility, there's a lot of money involved, and if a person is not willing to, you know, follow through on that, they're not going to work 
much, but he understood that and he was he did all the things he needed to do and he had a very successful career and people still want him as an actor, but he feels like he just has done all he wants to do in that area right now. Unless a really great role came along, I guess. So but. yes. You sound like you admire him a great deal. Oh yes, right, exactly from just like uh, from uh, the film. I mean, as, as a person, not just as an actor. Right. Well, I think that was part of it. Part of why, because he actually had not to, you know, toot my own horn, but I think we just saw things from, you know, the same uh, perspective that a lot of people had approached him about doing uh, an autobiography, but it was just sort of, you know, kind of churn it out and, you know, for making money or whatever reason. I don't know, but he said he turned. Uh, those down, and he just felt that you know I was the right person because uh, you know I, like I said, we, we we both had you know an understanding. There, there's more to it than just the um, you know the, the superficial aspect of it. So he wanted it to have meaning. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds very yeah. interesting. I'm looking forward to reading it, so oh. make sure you get me a copy. Okay, thank you <laughs> very <laughs> much. In fact, I'm donating one to the library. Okay, that's yeah. all right, great. And again, that's um, the flyers there for information uh, regarding that. So, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. All right. Have, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.